In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We come here to celebrate the sacred mysteries today on the third Sunday of Easter. And now I get to do one of my favorite things. Go around and sprinkle you. Let us pray. 
May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed and youthful of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead, and this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation of our sins, and not for our sins, only but for those of the world, whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his com- commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in breaking the bread. They were still speaking about this. He stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do you questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that is, I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While well, they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you had anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that Christ would suffer, rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. In our first reading today of Acts, Peter addresses the Israelites after he has cured a man who was crippled from birth. His words are accusatory, letting the people know they rejected the holy and righteous one and put him to death. Peter's words are also affirmative. In them, Peter testifies that the God of their fathers is the same God who raised Jesus, the holy and righteous one. Jesus' suffering fulfilled the message of the prophets, his resurrection and God's ultimate act of fidelity, fulfilling his promise of life to his people. Paul calls the Israelites to repentance and conversion. Our call to change does not stop at Lent, continues in the Easter season. So during Lent, I'm sure all of us fasted from something and uh, gave more prayer time and gave alms. And sometimes we struggle with the same commandment or commandments or maybe a sacrament as in confession. You know, but the Easter time is a season. It's actually longer than Lent, you know, that we can um, look at ourselves and do a good self-exam of conscience and say, you know, how can I help myself and moving more and more closer to imitating the Lord each and every day. What commandment or commandments that, that I need to change, that I need to repent from. In our psalm, seems a rather somber hymn for the Easter season. The psalm's subdued nature reflects the psalm's writer's confidence in God's gentle strength and power. In the refrain, we ask the Lord to shine his face upon us. We want to see God and live in his image and likeness as he created us. Example, he is the perfect model, the perfect template, the perfect pattern. We need to be a very good example for ourselves, our spouses if applies, children and grandchildren, nieces and nephews, and being the best Catholic on the inside as the outside as we can. And we want to make sure that that matches. We don't want to be out uh, on the exterior side of ourselves and we're talking about this person or that person, you know, and on the inside or, or vice versa, and that's the opposite. We want to make sure that we're spreading good news and, and not um, of gossip, just to mention one commandment. And we celebrate the psalm writer, the wonders God has done for us, and as Christians, especially the wonder of his son's resurrection. One of Bishop Hang's um, videos, they're usually about two, three, maybe four minutes long, Pretty much about five days a week they come out and on different subjects. Sometimes it's a saint, sometimes um, it's of that day, whatever it might be. But he said, you know, when you um, are struggling, just remember that Jesus has been raised from the dead. 
Then he went on to talk more and more about that day. And then he said, Jesus has been raised. He's been resurrected. And that's our faith, hope, and trust that someday too we are resurrected with Jesus and live in heaven forever. Just to go on, um, I had a question this past week you know, from a lady, a young lady, that she said, well, one of her friends um, is an atheist. And so I said, well, a lot of times a person is raised in a certain faith and, and possibly it doesn't matter if they're Catholic or Lutheran or Methodist, whichever it might be. Um, but then something happens in their life and then they say, I just don't believe in God anymore because how could this happen? Could be a death in a family or something medically or something at work, loss of a job, whatever it might be. So then they just say, God's not here. Um, I, I don't believe in God anymore. And so we know when we pray the creed in a little bit, we believe that our faith, hope, and trust, we know that, and I would say up here, a trillion times a trillion or infinitely, that we know God's going to be there at the end, and he's going to be judging us, and we're going to be um, on our knees, or we should be, asking him for forgiveness and asking him for his mercy, and that we are granted heaven. It's not a guarantee for us. And God grants us that. And so we know that, being Catholic, being Christian. And so I, t I said that to, to do that, um, to talk to her friend. But then um, in, in their viewpoint, being an atheist, you know, when you die, then later on, you know, there is no God, so you just go into the ground. And I said, well, you know, even to take that argument and just for the sake of we live our lives the best we can, love of God, love of neighbor, following commandments, you know, um, doing what we should do. Sometimes we make mistakes, we go to reconciliation, but we're doing all this for the Lord, helping others to the faith, you know, doing others um, good deeds, not for our own, but helping others, loving them, loving them is loving God. And so, just for the sake of, we die and then there is no God, just like you know, this, this uh, other person said. What have we lost? Really nothing, because you know, there is no God. But this person lives their lives and says, there's no God, and I'm gonna live my life the way I want to, do whatever I want, doesn't matter, doesn't, you know, there's no conscience there, there's nothing. And all of a sudden, that person dies, and as we know, there's God. What has he lost or she lost? Everything. They've lost their salvation. You know, because all of a sudden their God is. And so I would rather take the path that we do in belief of the Lord, knowing that the Lord um, is going to be there. He is with us. He created us. He's there for all time. And say, here we are, you know, when we, when we get there. Rather than take, um, just for the sake of argument, taking the other path and saying, well, God's not there, and, and knowing that he is going to be, how can he answer that? And just to, to make sure that everybody walks away from here and says, Father Jim says there's no God. <laughs> no, there is God, we know that. Um, but just to, for an argument, so if you know of anybody who doesn't believe in God, you know, to, to tell that um, little story, that little passage, you know, what will they do at the end? So in our second reading, uh, first letter of John, it's from which the last Sunday's gospel was taken, we move back to an early part of the letter. Are we in Lent? You might ask this question as you read the three short verses of, t of today's second reading. Sin is the obvious topic of the passage. We hope to remain faithful and to love God's commandments. He created those out of love for us. We hope not to sin, but the author of the, the letter is realistic. God's children will sin, and we do. Sin separates us from God, cuts off from grace, weakens us, hurts our soul. The sacrament of reconciliation helps get rid of our guilt, gives us extra graces, helps us to be stronger for Jesus Christ and his church. Most of all, helps to cleanse our soul and be at our best in receiving the Eucharist. We want to be at our best when receiving the Eucharist and reconciliation and the Eucharist 
go hand in hand. In our Gospel of Luke, Jesus offers peace once again to the disciples, as we heard him offer last Sunday. The disciples do not believe it is he, and Jesus recognizes that they are troubled, invites them to see his hands and feet for themselves. Easter joy fills the disciples. Jesus eats with them and breaks open the scriptures for them. Their growth and faith continues. Ours must too. In Easter time, as we strengthen ourselves for lifelong witness to the, to the to rise one, to the risen one. For all generations of disciples, though the risen Jesus' physical appearances have ceased, Jesus is readily and really accessible to the community still in its shared reflection on the scriptures and at the altar table of Jesus, sacrifice and supper. So who is Jesus for us? Only a vague or spiritual entity? Or is Jesus so real and here and now that our Sunday Eucharist is indeed an eating and drinking with Jesus as mass to mission? sending forth by Jesus to bear witness and sacrificial love. Jesus wants us in a prayer life, a, a dialogue with us each and every day. As I tell the students um, here on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we don't want, just want to call on Jesus and say, well, I need an A or a B this afternoon on my science test. Two weeks from now I'm having a math test, so I'll see you then, or I'll talk to you then. We want to have a dialogue with him each and every day as a child would talk to their mother or talk to their father or a husband and wife would talk to each other each and every day. That's what we want to do with God. So in, in our evangelization, we need to embrace five habits. And these are all encounters with the Lord. Number one, prayer, each and every day. Uh, scripture reading, reception of the sacraments of reconciliation in the Eucharist service for others in our community, and being in our community, leading other people to the Lord. To surrender to God, let Jesus lead you, lead us, and let the Holy Spirit empower you. In our prayer life, what is it that you want me to do, Lord? Who is it that you want me to visit? Where am I to go? I have my own plan, but what is your plan for me? So to take these encounters with Jesus and go into practice with them. Again, prayer, scripture reading, reception of the sacraments, reconciliation, Eucharist, service uh, to others, and in the community, leading others, people to Christ. Stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, from all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life to the world to come. Amen. Lord, please listen to the prayers that we have to offer you at this time. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church be ever thankful for the gifts of the earth and the graces that flow from the real presence of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that government leaders revere the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unemployed and the underemployed be comforted by God, who knows all needs and the longings of their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this congregation, united in love and service, be perfected in the love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the peace of Christ, especially for parishioners, that they may live anew in the light and mercy of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal needs and the needs written in our Book of Intercessions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, thank you for listening to our prayers as we are closer to you through Christ your Lord. Amen. Please be seated. stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, as you have given her cause for such great gladness. Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, Lord, and this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed and never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and never pleads our cause before you the sacrificial victim who dies no more the lamb once slain will live, who lives forever therefore overcome with paschal joy your land every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the power and working of the Holy Spirit, give life to all things and make them holy, and we cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body, blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. Therefore, our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion, your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, look forward to his second coming. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you. We may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. William and St. Patrick, St. John Vianney and St. Mary, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you are passing from this life. You have kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and for my divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
and may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Give each other a hand wave. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy for you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Look with kindness upon your people, Lord. Grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Just have our prayer for the end of violence. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, the power of God thrust into Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Just some announcements. Um, we have a, a new um, uh, parish address, as I've been saying. Um, okay, I'm plugged in. Um, so please send the, any mail to um, the address of 445 North Arch Street. Uh, we did sell the Ravine Street Rectory um, on March 31st, so no longer at that address. If you'd like to have a Mass celebrated for a loved one, um, please call the office, and the office is located if you're at the parish hall. You know, just look to your right, there's door number five, and that's the parish office now. And um, love begins here in June, so if you have a middle schooler or a high schooler, um, the dates are in there as well. Um, also, um, if you know of someone, maybe it could be a son or daughter, a niece, nephew, uh, whomever, that did not receive their confirmation um, when they were 14 or 16 or whatever it might be, um, please send them our way. Bishop Hying is going to have a special mass um, for, uh, to receive their confirmation. There'll be a few um, short classes in between, um, but that's on the back page of the um, uh, bulletin here. And I've been announcing the last couple weekends, um, going back um, to two weeks ago, that, um, and we have um, her here today, and if you'd like to come up, um, you can be seated. Thank you, Father. Um, my name is Amy Klarkowski, and I work for the Diocese of Madison. Uh, I don't know if you remember, I was here about a year ago to talk to you all about annulments and how I could help with that. Um, today, I'm here again. <laughs> you were so welcoming the first time. Um, I'm here again to talk to you about a new marriage pre program that we're implementing in the Diocese of Madison called Witness to Love. So this program is offered for all newly engaged couples as well as civilly married couples who are seeking sacramental marriage in the church. Um, Mike and Sharon Schrader will be your marriage prep coordinator couple. It's a lot to say, so it's a lot to live up to <laughs> um, for this new program. So Witness to Love seeks to offer newly engaged and civilly married couples a way to witness healthy marital family love and family life from a mentor couple while integrating them into their parish life. The key component of this program is for the newly engaged or civilly married couple to choose a mentor couple to journey with them in preparing for marriage and to remain with them as a source of support uh, after the wedding. And so this program's proven techniques have shown to substantially assist couples in the, setting the foundation for a long lasting and happy marriage. Um, and so if any of you also are uh, a Catholic who is married outside of the church in a civil ceremony, I have a special invitation for you to please come forward uh, and speak to me after about validating your marriage in the church so that you can receive the blessings and the grace of the sacrament of marriage. Um, and so I'll be in the back of church after Mass if you have any questions. I have cards, I have pamphlets that you could take either for yourself or if you have children or grandchildren who maybe need a little nudge to get married in the church. Um, so I'll be back there. Please stop by me. Uh, so we know that successful marriages do not just happen. Uh, your prayers and support for the couples, mentor couples, and program coordinators are encouraged and appreciated. So moving forward, we'll be doing marriage prep as a community. And any of you married couples that are sitting here today might be approached by a younger couple to walk with them before and after their wedding. When couples receive a sacrament in this parish, they are also received into the parish community. So please keep all of us in your prayers as we seek to renew and support marriage. Thank you for your attention and God bless you all.
Please bow your heads. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of your everlasting freedom, make you heirs to eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in the right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May the blessing, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and you remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is then and go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia.